AI is a tool for us. Everybody here is going to be using it, and we're going to use it in a very short time. It started on November 30, 2022 with ChatGPT. So it was less than two years ago. And you're going to see how far we've come since it opened up. What we're going towards is what's called artificial general intelligence. Artificial general intelligence means that it can do a, a task that at least 50% of the humans, better than 50% of the humans. Well, then you have artificial superintelligence, which it can do the task better than 100% of humans. It beat every human in chess. The game Go, it beats every human in Go. So we have artificial superintelligence for a task. Now, if you think of artificial intelligence as a brain, and some, some people don't like to think of it as a brain, they like to say it, all it does is predict the next word. But as humans, that's kind of what we do too, is when we're talking, we're predicting our next word. So it is kind of a brain. But if you look at it as a brain, what we have right now is we have more knowledge with artificial intelligence than one human brain. But we don't have all the knowledge of all the human brains. Artificial intelligence isn't there yet. When we get to artificial superintelligence, it will have more knowledge than all the human brains combined. That means if we get to artificial superintelligence, it can do any task better than any human. All tasks better than any human. We're gonna get artificial general intelligence 2026, Artificial superintelligence will be shortly after. We're two or three years away from that. Where any task that we can perform as a human, artificial intelligence will perform better. When you think of it like a brain, it goes into the brain and it comes out and does the task that you can do. Anything that we do that takes longer than an hour, we have to think, can artificial intelligence do it? And the answer will be yes. So here's the limitations now. It is not confidential, it's not private. We cannot, under any circumstances, put any attorney-client information into artificial intelligence. And we can't put in anything that we wouldn't want to see out in the public domain. In theory, artificial intelligence takes our searches and it goes ahead and incorporates it in the brain and there's a non-zero chance that that search that we do is going to come out in the future in somewhere else, in Indiana, in Canada, in Bangladesh, and we could have our client's information, medical information out there. You see that limitation? Cannot do that. It also gets things wrong, it's getting better. They call it hallucinations, which is just a, a, a bad way of saying it gets it wrong. But the way is like, we had the meeting this morning start at 8 a.m., but if I had told Easy that the meeting's gonna start at 8.30, and someone asked Easy, is it, what time's the meeting start? He says 8.30, it's not because Easy got bad information. And that's what happens when you scrape the entire internet and put it in the brain, there's some bad information there, and it's gonna spit out bad information. That's what happens with hallucinations. That's why whatever we do with artificial intelligence, you have to read over. You have to make sure it's 100% correct. It has potential for bias. So if you go on the internet and you take scrape off the entire internet, put it into a brain, then you've got bias. Right? And so you have a chance that whatever is gonna happen is gonna be biased. And then the last thing is Sam Altman, who's the head of OpenAI, which is make chat GPT. He was asked recently about, about how does it work? How does it work? And he said, it's like a brain. We don't fully understand how artificial intelligence works. We just put things in a black box and it spits it out. In other words, the people who made it don't even understand how artificial intelligence works. So we've got this black box issue where we're just throwing stuff in and it's throwing stuff out and we're not clear. So what are the ethics? Under the law, you have to be confident in technology. We as lawyers do. So Ewan and Nick and I have to be confident in technology. If we're not confident in technology, then we could be violating the ethics. Um, there was a student who came to me after class and said that they have a partner who is still getting the emails printed out and writing on the emails and giving it back to their legal assistant to put in to respond. That, to me, violates ethics 6 a. We've got dinosaurs all over in, in the law. They've got to get up to speed on this. They're going to be in trouble. You can't reveal attorney-client information. We already talked about that. Now, here's the thing that the defense attorney is going to run into. You get a thousand-page document. We'll talk about Claude in a second. But if you can see Claude, you can attach things. This is one of the artificial intelligence. And you throw a thousand page document into Claude and you say, please summarize this document. And in 20 seconds, it summarizes the entire document for you. And that's what the partner told you to do. Now, you know if you would have read it, it would take you two hours. How much do you bill? Do you bill point one? Do you bill two hours? Because it would have taken you two hours. If you think of this as any task that takes longer than an hour, you can do with AI and it takes it less than, less than a minute. What's that going to do to build hours for big firms? Doesn't bother us, but for contingency speed, doesn't bother us. And then there's some lawyers who say you have to tell the clients to the judges if you're using an AI tool and writing the reports. Uh, there is a federal judge who makes you say that you won't use artificial intelligence in any of your work, or if you do, you have to notify them. The big question is do we put it in our retainer agreement? 
do we say that we may be using artificial intelligence? And I think we're probably going to have to start putting that into our retainer agreement so that clients know that we use artificial intelligence in their case, but that human eyes are using it. So, first one you have is open.ai. If you go on open.ai, you get what's chat GPT. So, 3.5 is the free version. And if you want to do a question, you just put a question in there and you say, do an outline for a talk on artificial intelligence for law students. And you push, boom, and there it is. Right? That's how it works. Now, let's say I get to the end and I don't like it. What the thing about artificial intelligence is it, it, if you go ahead and redo the search, it gives you a different answer, just like your brain. When you say something and someone asks you a question and you answer it with your brain, if someone asks you the same question, you don't answer it exactly the same way. Regenerate, and it comes up with something new, right? Do they just shuffle words around? <coughs> no, this is a brand new, completely new outline. You asked him again, and he's like, all right, I'll do it. I've, I've done, he, no, do it better, and then it'll spit it'll out. Yeah, so yeah. Elon, go right here and say, do, yeah. it, do it in 100 words. Just takes it and makes it shorter. There you go. So this part right down here is called a prompt. And that word is super important because anything with artificial intelligence now gets multiplied by a thousand because it's so popular right now. There are people who do prompt engineers. There are engineers who all they do is they do prompts down here. And they get paid for it as a prompt engineer. So this is, now if you go back up, go from chat 3.5 to chat 4.0. This is the one that's paid for. It looks the same, except hit Explore GPTs. And if you notice, if you go in here, it's got all these different things that you can explore. And one of the things you can do, go to Dolly. Dolly is text. It's an image generator, so go ahead, click on Dolly. And click in, just generate. It, it's got its own conversation starter, or you can start a chat. You can start a chat and just say, draw me a picture of cats on a rainbow. Here you go, Amanda. You see here, it's creating the image. So this is how long it's taken for it to get it done. And this is DALL-E, D-A-L-L-E. It is a component of ChatGPT. 4.0 is a paid version. 3.5 is the free version. 4.0 is personal, it's 20 bucks a month. Then we have uh, the business version where you pay 25 per user per month or there's an enterprise version and we'll explain what that does for you. So there's your cats on a rainbow. Super All right. sweet. <laughs> now regenerate. I don't like that one. That cat bothers me. So let's regenerate. And so while it regenerates, this is, this is powered by Microsoft. Okay, so Microsoft owns 49% of it. This is all based on Microsoft. The other ones that are out there, we'll go to in a second. Claude, which is backed by Amazon, and Gemini 1.5, which is backed by Google. Uh, Google was behind. They had about two years ago, three years ago, they had what they called a red flag memo that they sent around to all the, all the powers that be saying, uh-oh, we see what's going on with Jet GTP, and we need to get out in front of it. And so Google has been racing, and we're in an arms race right now, a technological arms race right now. And so, what you can do in addition, this is Dolly, this is text. Here's a new one of Cats on the Rainbow. It just generates something brand new. Now let's go to Claude. You can go back to Claude. Claude's the same thing. You have your search bar here. If you unchat GPT, there's a way you can go ahead and, and, and upload things. Go back one more time to chat GPT if you wouldn't mind. Anyone. So in this Explorer, what you can do is you can create and we won't do it right now, but you can create your own chat GPT for your own business. So you can have artificial in your own brain for your own business. There's a law firm, DLA Piper, which has 14 lawyers that are practicing artificial intelligence and 100 data scientists. What are they doing? They're clicking their own into artificial intelligence. They're taking all their documents, all their memos, all their emails, all their information, putting it into an internal brain, and then if a lawyer comes in and goes, hey, we've got a summary judgment in front of Judge Pittman, on a slip and fall case, please generate a summary judgment response. It gets into the whole firm's information and will generate a response. So Elon can do something for us on, we'll use Claude. We'll get there. Dump something in Elon on a case. So Elon's gonna go ahead and take a petition, put it in there, police report. What are you gonna generate, Elon? Plaintiff's first set of interrogatories. 
right. So what he's doing, he's going to generate, just say generate written discovery. Now you know how long this takes, right? You can normally do this. And so he's getting there, he makes a real specific inquiry, and while he does this, he, he, and once he gets done with this and he doesn't like what it is, he can always regenerate it and get a new set. And, or you can take the set you have and be more specific. So right now we see right here it's working and that it's going ahead and putting together the interrogatories. Now keep in mind how long it would take us to do this. And now this is just the interrogatories all of a sudden they're there in the case that we just had. And we can go ahead and take these interrogatories and we can change them if we want, put them together, but we've already got discovery generating here. If you want, you can go ahead and do put their discovery in there, Amanda, and do objections and discovery responses. And you can use Claude to do that. Because that's all public information. The petition's public information, all that's public information. What Elon just did at the top was a prompt, and you can get really specific. One thing I learned is they like some sort of context and then the request. So you put in there, this is a truck wreck case. Uh, and we want to have very specific interrogatories, please generate, and that's the way you do it. So you do some context of what it is that we want, and then you do the prompt that we want. What are you going to do now, Ian? I'm going to do a deposition outline. So now Elon dumped in all the discovery, you only do five. Elon dumped in as much discovery as he can, and he's going to prepare a, a, a deposition outline. So he's got a deposition coming up, he wants to get ready for deposition. He goes ahead, and this is what you run into, right? You, when you work it and you're playing with this stuff, you always run into these little problems you have up here. Maybe it's too much. Maybe we, maybe your PDF is too big. So you always got to play with it. But as this, keep in mind this is less than two years old. And as we get into this more and more and understand it, it's going to expand more and more. There are restrictions on it. You can't do pornography. You can't do searches on specific people with respect to trying to do deep fakes and videos, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So there's all kinds of restrictions on this, but this is what's going on. So as you can see, you can do research and do a research and say, hey, give me interrogatories on Google, but then you have to go look them up, see if they're right. It doesn't actually generate them. You have to go back and generate them. This takes out all the steps right here. Every task that you have, like I said, that you think is going to take an hour, you go ahead and do here and try and make it better. While this is generating, I'm gonna tell you some of the wrong ways that the lawyers are using it. The famous case in New York where the lawyer generated a brief using like we are right here and the, the citations on the brief were all wrong. And so then he went ahead and the other side saw it and said, judge, the citation's all wrong. And so he had an order from the court to explain why the citations were wrong. And he went back into artificial intelligence and artificial intelligence gave him false information again on the citations. So then he had to go in front of the judge and explain to the judge why he did that. And he said, I just don't understand artificial intelligence. He said it again and again. The other one, we got the United States Second Circuit used the brief again with fake citations, and he got sent to the grievance committee. We have a Missouri appellate lawyer, 22 of the 24 citations were fake. You all heard about Air, Air Canada where they had a chat bot. And the person on the chat bot was told that the, the new flight was going to be free. And uh, Air Canada said, wait a minute, that, that's not free. And they go, well, here, on the chat bot, it says. And their response was, oh, the chat bot's not us. It's another legal one. But the, the court said, no, you are the chat bot. Then you have a sexual harassment professor who teaches sexual harassment. When you went and typed his name in and said, give me the biography to this professor, it didn't say he taught sexual harassment. It said he was charged with sexual <laughs> so that's a, the hallucinations, and that's how it can be wrong. Here's the outline. That's the outline for the definition. It's here and ready to go. Now Elon's going to generate actual questions. Instead of just the outline, he's going to have questions. Here's the thing. Elon's going to do an avatar of himself to take the deposition using the questions. From, you think we're, you think wow, in this course, racing. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be out racing while his avatar is teeth. taking the deposition. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to that. <laughs> so, here's general AI tools that we can use. This Sora came out last week, uh, February 15th. It is groundbreaking. <laughs> text, to, text to video. So now we have the Cats on the Rainbow. If you have Sora and you can say, do a video of Cats on the Rainbow, it'll generate a minute video of a Cats on Rainbow, hyper-realistic. If you try Ships and Coffee or Grandma Cooking on YouTube, you go to YouTube and look up there, Ships and a Cup of Coffee or Grandma Cooking, you will see the videos and they are hyper-realistic. We are not going to be able to tell the difference 
between Sora created videos and real videos. It is going to make our job really difficult if we have a video and a camera. The way I really want it to happen is when we have text to video, we have police reports to video. Mm -hmm. Imagine taking the testimony, the police report, dumping it all into Sora and say, give me a one minute video recreating the accident from the point of view of our driver. Boom, off it comes. Give me a one minute video of, from the point of view of the other driver. Boom. Give me an overhead video of the wreck and it'll give you the entire recreation. Then you get into deposition and you ask the other side, is this a fair and accurate representation of what happened? Yes, it is. Now you have admissible evidence. The downside of this is you can't trust any video that you see. Any video that we have now, we have to verify. Trust but verify. Mid Journey and Dolly, you just saw the text of the images with Cat on Rainbow. Munch will take a long video and get it to a short video. You don't even have to edit it. I, I do have a question in regards to the videos, like text yeah. videos, right? Is there a, some kind of stamp where it can be it, in the details shown where it was originally created? Yeah, so Sora has a little watermark in the lower right hand okay. corner, but you know, when, once this stuff gets into hands of people that you know, more mark. I mean, you know how easy it is to scan yeah. video. Yeah, people will be able to do stuff with it, so they'll prop out that watermark. Yeah. So it's not. It's gonna be very, very difficult to figure out. You saw the text images with cats on the rainbow. That makes long videos, short video. Jasper is that's right already here. The long videos are short. That's yeah. right here. Yeah, Munch. So, These are all tools so, that are here. So Munch. with Munch, yeah, with Munch, do you think you could get it set up to where you could do Dapo cuts with that? Absolutely. Perfect. That'd be cool. Jasper is writing, so you can take your, if you run your document, throw it in Jasper and optimize it. Take out the passive voice. Make it from eight pages, ten pages to eight pages. It can do whatever you need to do. And then if you have a resume, Kick Resume will take your resume and will make it super sharp. It is the pro I got this in, in the side videos I have, and it was the first time I heard this, right? Uh, but I asked for an explanation. He couldn't really explain it to me. His feedback to me was, it sounds too much like AI. And my question to you, is that going to be the direction where everything is going to be so proper, so um, where it, it looks AI, where, you know what I'm saying, where you can hide your ignorance through this and appear very intelligent. So Elon sent me a draft of a, of a brief. <laughs> the Terminator the bus. I'm yeah, the bus. Not bad. Elon, Elon sent me a draft of the brief, and I could tell where AI was writing it, and I could tell where Elon was writing it. Uh, yeah? Yeah. And I, I will say that on the briefs that I've done using uh, Claude, it'll pull case law that's real case law, but it's not applicable to the case. Right. It, and you have to look at the cases <laughs> and verify that it's actually what you want. Some of it was okay, that probably came from a website or a blog post or something where somebody was talking about an issue that we were addressing, but you have to be very careful with what it spits out. It's amazing what it can do, and, and there are tools that can detect whether something was generated by AI or not. But schools, TCU, in fact, has discontinued that tool because it's getting too hard to detect. So that's where we're at. Addy AI does, actually does a response to your emails for you. It takes all your emails and does a, a, a response. I had a lawyer I talked to last week who used this and says it's great. 80% of the time he has an email, he has Addy do the response, and he said 80% of the time it's what he needs and it's moves on. You're going to have people who don't know what they're doing, and they're going to have, what you're going to have is a little thing in the corner called the AI assistant. That you can, you, can either you can either click on it and text what you want, or you can even talk to it. And I could say, what I want to call down to Mary and say, Mary, e-file this petition. I just say to the AI assistant, e-file this petition. And Microsoft already came out with it. If you've, got, if you've logged into a Microsoft computer recently with updates, it has their AI tool attached to it. And it'll browse for you. Like you say, search Google for this. If you have a microphone, it'll do it. It's Adobe does it with their, any document you have now in Adobe, it's got an AI assistant. It'll do anything you want with the document. You just gotta click in there and tell it what you want it to do. Do you think that sales is going to be monopolized with Everything. You think so? Because yeah. I would rather talk to somebody and see I'll a screen. I'll get to okay. You got Canva, which is a design which we use, Canva. And then to me, which is presentations, which this is. So in this, I can do all kinds of stuff on this presentation. I actually use AI to do some of this presentation. Now, legal specific stuff. This is interesting in that what is happening, and the way I read it, is the big law firms, these major law firms, are going to take all their knowledge, and they're going to create their own chat GPT, and they're going to keep that. That is the asset of the law firm. It's not the asset of any one attorney. 
all this work that these attorneys have been doing, they put into this and they generate it out. What that does is if a partner wants to leave, the partner doesn't get to take ChatGPT with them. So this gives firms so much more power over their lawyers. Because their lawyer, if they can just have a big firm where they can type in their tool and go out and play golf or go home and do whatever they want to do, and then they lose access to that tool, they're not going to leave the firm. So it's, it's going to create a deal that's going to be such a big brain for the big law firms that the big AMLA 100s that have so many offices all throughout the world and can get all that data into one brain and spit it out, it's going to be incredible, super powerful. That's going to be a major asset there that they're going to have. And we, as a little firm, can create our own. And Mary has all the documents on the old hard drive. We can dump all that stuff into it and create our own little brain. And then we can do the workflows. And we can do all kinds of things with it as we go forward. So that's something we do. NetDocs has, is really good. The problem I had with NetDocs was I thought NetDocs was going to do the same thing as this and create your own internal mind. But they're using ChatGPT. And I said to them, how do we know that if we have attorney-client information, because all our net docs have attorney-client, that it's not going out there, and they say have a contract with Microsoft, and Microsoft is telling them that they will not have human eyes to look at it. But how do we know that? Our duty as lawyers is to, we have a duty to do dil due diligence on all of these to make sure that they're not violating attorney-client. And I'm not, at this point, satisfied with the way net docs are working on it. Um, Filebind uses it, Lexus AI uses it. Now what I'm seeing in all these, if you, uh, 3545 went to a convention recently and they went to every booth and every booth said, yeah, we have AI. And he'd ask them, well, how, what is your AI? Oh, we just have it, right? Because they have to have it because if you don't have AI, you're doing it. All they do is they take one of these, one of these searches and they figured out the best prompt and they bake it into their product so that instead of the search coming up, it's just a drop down screen that says draft interrogatories. Or, or do interrogatories, and you just click on it and it creates the interrogatories using this. That's all it is. They're just baking in one prompt into their, into their program. So when we hear that these legal specific <coughs> AI tools have AI, they don't really. They do, but we can do everything free or over on cloud. The ones that are way ahead are Adobe's way ahead on it. Lexus and Westlaw, since they have all the case law, they've done some neat stuff with AI. But the, the general vendors, the file lines of the world, the case management systems of the world, they're trying, but they're behind. And so it's not where it needs to be. Law school. They teach law school the same way now that they did 35 years ago. How is it that if a lawyer can go out here, and a law student can go out here and do this in legal writing, or if you have a final exam and you attach the final exam to this and it gives you the answer, why the heck do we have law school? But it is not realistic for a law student to go three months of class and have a three hour exam closed book. That is not realistic. That is not the way the real world works. The way the real world works is you do this. So I think law school is outdated. I think it is in big trouble right now in terms of how they teach and they're gonna have to get with the program pretty quick. Um, especially second and third year. First year I understand. I look, and you know, you have to learn before you play sport, you have to learn how to tie your shoes. Law school to me is learning, first year is learning how to tie your shoes. How do you read a case, understanding the terminology, getting all that information. But once you're past that and get the basics, this does everything. And then judges. Judges are going to be tempted to use this too. Dump both sides briefs in and give me, a, give me a, an opinion. Judges can do this all day long and we never know. Oh, I'm going to deny your motion. And that's all they have to say. All they did was dump it into here and came up with the answer and went ahead and did that. All right, this is the last one. This is the fun stuff. The Pope in a puppy jacket. That's a deep fake. That is a deep fake picture right here. Obviously, the Pope doesn't wear that puppy jacket. But it sure looks like he is. You can see. But you can see some little things, right? And you can see some little things. But there are so many ways to create deep fakes. So what is good about the future of AI? What's bad? Obviously, we're going to improve productivity. We're going to be able to tackle complex issues. There is an AI screening device right now that if you run it over your arm, it can detect skin cancer 95% of the time. It's going to get to the point, and I've talked about this a lot, right. where you're going to be able to go ahead and put something in your body, like AI will be inside your body, it will continuously monitor your blood, it will continue <coughs> monitoring everything, and if you have some cancer cells coming up, it will notify you like a car with warning lights. 
that's where we're going to get with it. It's going to get it so you have your own. You're going to take this Apple with their Vision Pro. It's going to turn into glasses, and you're going to have little warning lights on there, and it's going to pop up and go, you're getting sick. You've got a cold coming on. You've got a flu coming on. Here's what you need to do. If they get really sophisticated, they'll in, have in there, they'll be able to go ahead and put the medicines inside of it or transmit the medicines to it, and those will immediately go into your system and get it before you get sick. Absolutely amazing. Save the bees. We'll be able to figure out how to save the bees. And that's a big thing because we don't want the whole planet to collapse. Disabled people are getting helped already with this stuff. They can do all the tasks that disabled people need to get done. Work on climate change, preserve wildlife, allocate food. And then we talk about the singularity where you can go ahead and dump yourself, your thinking, your entire self into a computer and then put it into somebody else or something else so that you will live forever. In theory. In theory. I had a conversation with someone this weekend about it where if you get to the point where you can download your consciousness, download who you are into a computer and download it into something else, what happens when we get to the point where you can download it into a living being? So download your existence into another human being. No, what about a dog? Or a dog. You want to be a dog. And, but you and the dog, then, you and, if you're married and you want to go ahead and for your wife or your husband, download yourself so that you truly are one. Oh my God. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> then, well, that's it. Are you committed, Renee? Stop. Are you committed to your life <laughs> so that you can download your... No, then they get to know what you're thinking. You get to know what they're thinking. Hell no. <laughs> no, no, no. But I mean, that's where we're coming, right? We're getting in this whole, whole thing about <coughs> downloading our consciousness and putting it there. You say, oh, that'll never happen. When we get artificial superintelligence that can do more than all the human brains combined, what's it going to tell us? What's it going to be able to do for us? Here's what's bad. You've got your Pope in a puppy jack. That's funny. But now we can't trust anything. We can't trust any video. We can't trust any picture. There's just nothing you can, you can trust. Job loss. If you can do this stuff this quickly, mm -hmm. you're going to lose jobs. Social manipulation. Hey, hey, artificial superintelligence. I want to get all the Trump supporters to do this. I want to get all the Biden supporters to do this. I want the United States to feel this way. How can we manipulate it? Oh, well, that can't do it. If you have the brain that's smarter than all our brains combined, it'll figure it out. We won't even know what's happening. Military. That's, that's scary stuff. If the military comes in, we have, we have ethics restrictions. Like I told you, you can't do pornography, can't do deep fakes of, of people and stuff. But if they come in, military and says it's national security, I want unlimited access to it. And then we have autonomous drones that are thinking on their own. We have autonomous soldiers that are robots, but we've downloaded someone's a copy of the consciousness into the soldier so that the soldier still lives, but the drone out there, or the, the robots out there doing the fighting for us. I mean, that's what, militarization is scary. The finance flash crash. I think I told you all there was a stock that put on their report that it was, that they made a typo. They meant to put 0.5 instead of 5. Artificial intelligence picked up on it, raised the stock up immediately. Like within seconds after that was published, the stock went up 20%. And then they came back 20 minutes later and said, we got that wrong. And artificial intelligence, boom, put it right back to where it was. How can a person go ahead and, and I'll predict that? You can't. Day traders are in trouble. People who try and predict the stock market are in trouble. The other thing is these computers are going to figure out when we start to dive and we start to have a crash, AI is going to gather the profits sweep everything off, and our crash could happen in a matter of seconds, and we could lose billions, if not trillions, of dollars. Privacy issues, they're going to know everything about everything. These cameras that we have on our phones, these cameras we have on our thing, they can get into, our, into your house. Um, that's going to be a problem with privacy. And then the ultimate thing that you see in the movies, it becomes self-aware and decides that we as humans are a parasite on this earth, which we are. And that would be better off if we had less of us, or none of us. And it'll figure out the most efficient way to get rid of human beings. Let's go down to the water supply and dump a bunch of, a bunch of chemicals in there that humans can't affect. Let's start a, a virus that's even more powerful than COVID. Yeah, isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful to think about? So these are the good and the bad. And the problem that you have with this is we, we got people in charge who are humans and never underestimate the greed of the American executive 
what we had with Sam Altman, and what Sam Altman was running it was the face of OpenAI, the face of ChatGPT, and they fired it. Now, Sam was smart, and he said, okay, Microsoft owns 49% of this, I'll just go work at Microsoft and compete against you. And they hired him back the next day. So fortunately, Sam's still there, and he seems to be an ethical guy. But we're, we're stuck on ethics. Every market, I think, will be influenced. I think a lot of markets will be taken over, as you mentioned, job losses, such as, yeah. I think, for example, in our industry, Mary's all her templates, right? Essentially, what they did was all her templates and then figured out how she created her templates to be able to create more templates. That's right. What industry will not be taken over? Well, in our world, criminal law is one that won't be as affected as much because they're physically in the jail. You have to go down to the courthouse as a court as an attorney. You have to appear for that that you know the defendant. You have to make an announcement for that defendant. You ultimately have to make a plea bargain in person or try the case in person. Everything's in person, right? There is not a lot of paperwork. There's not a lot of gener generating that's done in the criminal law. So criminal law won't be affected that much. I don't think ours will be affected that much too because it will be. But personal injury is wrecks. Right? And there are people who are hurt. And so I don't think we'll be affected that much. Where it will affect us, and what we've got to get on top of is marketing. This thing is huge for marketing. Mm -hmm. right? How do we get the right client? This will tell us exactly how to do it, tell us how to execute it, and maybe even execute it for us if we do it right. So marketing is a big thing. All the stuff that England's doing, all the back work that we do, all the admin work, it's going to take care of all that. Why do you think that sales is going to be taken over? I, I for some reason, I think that sales is one. I think there's room for AI and everything, but I think sales, there will always be the case where people want to talk to someone who's not educated, want to be educated, right? So I agree with that. I think sales are always one-to-one, -one, and the relationship that you have with the other person is, is paramount. Yeah. You hire people, you don't hire the service or the product. That's right. But D.R. Horton, the world, the country's largest home builder, taking away people who are selling houses. What you do now is you go to the house, and AI walks you through the house and gives you the tour. And what D.R. Horton gets out of that is they have cameras in the house that follow people around and they get the data from it. And they go, well, why did the person spend 30 minutes in the living room and only one minute in the master bath? We need to figure out why they're spending so much time here and so little time there. And they go ahead and, and generate that data from there and then they, and they pump it into AI and figure out the best way to sell a house. It's also like customer service for websites. So like if I went to, for instance, if I wanted to buy coffee, the chat is no longer a person. Yeah. Like it's a, a live chat, but it's it's run by either one of these AI. But it is a live person at the end of the day. No, it's not. You can get to a live person right. if you follow the correct prompts. For example, when I'm on this, all that, I want to talk to a live person. I'm the type of person I want to talk to a live person. Right. Yeah, but it's just like what we get with call centers. You know, it's an awkward <coughs> call up until you finally get to the person. Yeah. But they're going to make it more and more difficult. And Renee, pretty soon it's going to be indistinguishable between a live person and. I'll say I'm probably the opposite. Like, I have to do something on T Mobile and I was here. It's quicker to do it through the automated. Yeah. I just click the buttons, it fixes what I need, and I never yeah. have to get on a call. And it's going to be able to do, if it gets to artificial super intelligence, it's going to be able to do what you want it to do quicker than a human can do. What I thought was crazy with the text to video is there there was a law firm that's a, a bigger firm and when they bring people in to train them they have their all their training materials were in uh, in text and then they generated it and now there's they just picked this is what the the lady looks like and she speaks the words and you almost cannot tell if you look really close you can tell something's not right with her because of the uncanny valley but it's close you know go to youtube and, and go to sora examples I want to see. I pulled up the ships and coffee. Did you? When you're talking. It's pretty cool. So yeah, do ships and coffee. So are ships and coffee. So cool. That's ships and coffee. And that's a hundred percent AI generated. Yeah. And nobody filmed that, right? Yep. That's hundred percent AI generated. It's cool, dude. That's wild. Yeah. You figure out what it's gonna do for video games. Right. Do the one and Sora. The, the, the um. She's an Asian girl walking on the street, I think it's called. The video effects people. I don't really want this in my YouTube history. <laughs> <laughs> walking on the street. <laughs> Not street walking. <laughs> this is on record. My wife calls her to <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and click. 
Asian streetwalker. That's it's the prompt was a stylish woman walks down a Tokyo street filled with warm, glowing neon and animated city signage. She wears a black leather jacket, a long red dress, black boots, carries a black purse. She wears sunglasses, red lipstick. She walks confidently in casualty. Right, the street right. is damp and reflective. That looks fake to me. She's gonna get hit by a car wearing those sunglasses at night. It, it may look I get, a I get show, but show it's the grandma cooking. That looks too AI. Well, you're gonna have a bunch of. Would you know if somebody didn't tell you though? No. Nope. Like Test leaf in the video. How's that look? That one looks more real. Uh, what you can tell is her hands. Oh, that spoon appeared out of nowhere. Yeah. Right. But then, remember, but this is a week old. It's getting there, man. Like this is a week old. Do uh, Golden Retrievers podcast. You have Golden Retrievers with a podcast on them out. Yeah, I'm not buying that one. <laughs> well, of course you're not buying because they're not doing a podcast. No, I but know I'm, that, but it just looks too damn fake to me. What about it? For me, you can see on the live Because the, dog, the dogs have headphones on. No, you can tell. In a green screen, you can tell green screens all the time. That's not a green screen. I understand that, but the lines, that looks more real. The dog <laughs> would more thing. Do the cat in the garden. Yeah, believe it. I think it's really cool. You send me video AI deep fakes of Elon Musk talking about how they're gonna put V8s in all the Teslas and you believe right. it. Right. But yeah. this right here <laughs> <laughs> But this right here is oh, no, no, no. Right. Right. Can you Musk, believe Hugo? You can you believe this man? Of what he's V8. saying. Do the bling amazing. Do the zoo with bling. This is it. And zoo with a little Joe Exotic. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Pretty cool, man. Yeah? yeah, the monkey's got a crown on. That's what's gonna happen so, when AI ruins the world. The monkeys are gonna have all this the This is all this is all they, it's been out a week. That one was really cool. And so this is gonna generate this is they're starting to make it you know, this is version one point oh. Imagine the iPhone 1.0, the iPhone first iPhone, and now we are where we are now. The all the, the tools we had, and and it is so. Sam Altman of OpenAI, he just said that it's raising seven trillion with a T to create a server farm to halt to, to house all of it. He's getting computer chips that are going to create, in essence, the matrix. So, with this being said, what do you see the future? Workforce. Well, you got to have engineers. You got data engineers who can put all the data together. You have to have people who know how to do the prompts and get the information. And then, uh, you know, what percent of people is that? You see what I'm saying? What I'm trying to figure out is what is the future? Are we going to be a bunch of people that are just not doing anything with our lives? We're just we don't know anything, but we know how to find the answer. You uh, you understand? Like yeah, yeah. That's what we're dealing with now. Currently, ignorant people that think they know what to do because they can find an answer, but they really don't know. Well, and the question is, is that is that good or bad? I mean, if you can find the answer, you have bad. to know how to get to it. I think it's bad. I think you have to learn, like we talked about, any sport you play, you have to learn how to tie your yeah. shoe. You have to learn how to put, pull your sock up right. You have to learn the basics. If you're in chemistry, you have to learn to understand the basics of it. But does anybody understand really how an iPhone works? But well, we use them all the time. Yeah. And it gives us the answers, and we all rely on it. We know how Instagram works or any of these things work. Now, Jim and I had a little problem. The other thing you can do with this AI is you can dial up and dial down certain things like with your own brain. So let's say you want to be more creative and when you draw or write, you can dial up your creativity on your brain. They can do that with AI and they can dial up the creativity. When you do that, it's much more prone to making mistakes because it wants you to be creative and make mistakes. You can also dial down the bias. And what happened with Gemini is they dialed down they dialed down the bias so much that they made it like you couldn't have a picture of George Washington that was white. You had to be black or Asian like that. And so when they typed in George Washington, all you got were Asian George Washington. <laughs> right? So Gemini had a problem, right? And so they took down their dolly, their text to, to picture. And so now you they're just everybody's fiddling with the knobs on artificial intelligence. Make it so you can do it whatever you want to do. Yeah, but at the yeah. end of the day, it's a tool, and we have to figure out how to use it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's good. That's my problem. I agree. It should be a tool, but this is going to be everybody's norm. Like, this is going to be nobody's going to. Well, people are going to be ignorant. 
But is it everybody's norm? You're going to have the dinosaur partner in the corner office who doesn't even have a computer on his desk mm -hmm. or doesn't even know how, uh, how to use the case management system that they already have. Can't do searches, can't create their own Word document. What happens to that dinosaur? All they have is the contact with Nike as their top client. They've gone and played golf with the guy from Nike, and they, he's, they've got him as a client. Those and, guys are going to die out. And we you don't want to be those guys. Well, I'm, I don't know. Still relationships. I like, are I like where I'm at because I still have some some more of intelligence, yeah. and now I have tools to use my intelligence with. Mm -hmm. Where I suppose my intelligence is only my tools. It's, it's going to be how you decide to use the tools yeah. too. I agree with that. Because yeah. they can so. simplify your work, and then you'll still you'll still check the accuracy, so yeah. your right. your knowledge is still there, and it's just now. Yeah. It, you're going to learn. It's not, and it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. Like with the briefs that we've done over the last month and a half, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it helps with a skeleton. So it takes up that first four or five hours of summarizing right. what you want to argue, how you want to argue it, or it gives you the inspiration of which way to go. If you're, if you're troubling, having, having trouble trying to figure out how do I want to argue this, what is the evidence that is best in my favor, how can I put it into a document, it, it helps you prompt that. Mm -hmm. But we still have to go through it, verify that the information is correct, and then expand on the areas that need to be done. Well, Which means you have to know yourself. So. Yeah, but like I'll tell you, like what I'm spending more time doing right now is what we don't have an AI tool that's accessible to us just yet, which is finding the right cases and then applying it to our situation. But we're not very far off because once Lexis and Westlaw allow us to, to, to do a prompt with AI on them, like finding a case that is in the plaintiff's favor that says you know, something like that, but where we're going to get good is this. It's it's how, how you draft, what you put into this, the generation of the prompts. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. like, I, I can tell you that like just using the word generate to me has given me better results than saying, give me this. Even though it means the same thing. I don't know why, but that's, that's what... I still use the words please. I don't know why I still do that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be nice. That way, when they flip, they're like, oh, that's what you got. Yeah. I always use it. Yeah, I don't want to piss off the AI. But do you really focus on you? They're going to say friendly. Do you know what I'm saying, though? Oh, well, let me think of let me think of some things, right? The State Farm and Allstate get hold of this, right? And and they had that that program, what was Colossus, where they would where they would predict the value of a case. They get hold of this. They really do have the value of the case predicted. Maybe they call it Mitchell now, but yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe not, right? The people always have the power, though. That's the good thing about that. That's right, and the people can always override what they And that's the scary thing for us is the day that adjusters no longer have to be human beings. They, they all, suck already, though. I know they suck, but <laughs> they don't if know it's a computer doing. program that has no empathy and will not understand risk as well as a person, they're going to have to program that in though. It's not, jurors could this, jurors could that. This kind of reminds me of, of why there's so many bad spellers, and I'm one of them, right? That a lot of people don't know how to spell because they just get corrected in, as they're typing. People can't do cursive. They don't even teach that anymore. Right. Can't they, do yeah, anymore. that's what I'm talking about. The other, <coughs> the other thing is we are, if you look yeah. at these law firms and you look at State Farm, they are the Titanic. We are a speedboat. The advantage we have is we can all learn this stuff right here, right now, and do it quick and move on a dime. You can't move a big insurance company. There are too many people doing it too many different ways in too many corners of their world, and they won't learn how to do this stuff. We can move quickly. That is our advantage. That's why I'm teaching you all this, so that we can move quickly and do what we can for our clients and do what's in the best interest of our clients. In theory, with a smaller group, we could take on more cases. Yeah, because if we can optimize how long it takes for us to generate a petition, generate discovery, respond to discovery in litigation, we have more capacity to take on more cases. The thing that could happen with you is it could turn you into an avatar where they could do intake through an avatar. So it's Renee and it, it incorporates all of you, it listens to a hundred of your client intakes and then it develops what you know and then it can do it through artificial intelligence. I won't be able to reap that benefit playing golf somewhere when my avatar is working for me. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. I'm in sorry. one of my classes, there's a young lady, she's been hired, she's got three full-time jobs working from home as a marketing specialist. Okay. So she does 
for marketing two-thirds quicker than they think, so she was able to get three jobs. In theory, you could be so much more efficient, but that's, is that ethical? Yeah. You're getting paid for 40 hours, but you're only working 13? Yeah. What's your answer on that? Mm -hmm. for you uh, I think, I think it's similar to the billable hour. Yeah, it's like when your AC breaks, yeah, they may just need to reset something or flip a switch or do something different, but you're paying for that knowledge, that expertise to know how to do that. Yeah. Just like when you go to the doctor, yeah, they charge you ninety dollars just to see you and, and prescribe you. Yeah, time but away. they went what <laughs> eight years of school, two years of residency, right. two years of fellowship. Yeah. Like it's not. But they can dump in your symptoms into AI, and they can dump in all your readings, and that's your blood cool. tests, and all that that's, stuff. That's what I like because there's people living with chronic pain and can't really figure out exactly what it is. But like, if AI gets a hold of that and they can get treatment regimens, like or or spinal stimulators or whatever. Fix them right up. Figure it's out the awesome. diseases that they yeah. have. Figure out the best treatment for them. This is going to be the hardest thing, though. Figuring out how Brain to fix it. Brain is the hardest thing to figure out. We don't out. even know what that is. What's well, the same thing black box? We don't know yeah. how it works just like AI. They don't understand how the black box works. Yeah. yeah. The, the improvisation of AI is the, I think that's the thing. Cool the what? The improvisation of what it can do yeah. based well, on the prompts that you're doing. When it gets empathy and it gets humor, then what else, yeah. what, else is, what else is there? There's a unit. Mm. Right, and then then it becomes human-like, and then what's that movie with Robin Williams where he becomes a uh, he's like an android. bicentennial man. Bicentennial man. Yeah. I was going to say Jumanji. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a second, that was the second choice. <laughs> so what else? Do y'all think of anything else we can use this for right now? I mean, you, what you need to do is think about your job and think about what is it that we can put in here to make it work. Uh, and how we can make it more efficient. I think the the uh, the case flow that we're doing there, the what are they called? Yeah, workflow. Workflow. Okay, yeah, maybe we'll do it. For instance, these are the deadlines that I <coughs> added to the workflow for litigation. A script-based AI would probably be able to do implement this into a calendar pretty easily, but. And then you take that. And, Dump it into a file line, and that's what we have to do. But I think what you touched on earlier about the big firms being able to put everything into their own like closed system, like that's what we could do with, with our office. Is, you know, if we have a closed system that has our work product in it, that is our process. It's what we bring to the table, and then if we can figure out a way to have an AI that is compliant with our clients' documents, and we can get to the point where we can put in. Our clients medical records and the things that are HIPAA protected and say generate a summary generate a uh, direct questions for trial based on these injuries and these symptoms generate charts that graph what the person's pain was right. at the beginning of the record generate a timeline of treatment yeah that's one slide for yeah me. I mean that that's half of what I do no problems before for this wreck happened Here's the timeline of events. Here's the treatment. This is what the injuries were. Here's the pain level, and you can have it spike like if they're at a ten this day. Just whatever. I mean, you can do anything with it in terms yeah. of how, how does that affect non competes? If you're saying the firm will now have its own AI, right? You as an attorney come in, you've contributed to now build the AI of the firm, and then you go off, right? You have built this firm now, and now you can't take the concepts of what you well, have here. And that's just like scientists and university. The right. university came up, I mean, the, even the specific scientist cured cancer. Right, I'm just saying, how is it now? now the, well, I think what this does is it makes the lawyers less likely to move from a big firm. If the big firm has the AI and they've done it right, and they can do their job 50% easier, and then if they why move, would they to, want to why leave? would they want to leave? Especially if it has all its knowledge in it. Has all your knowledge in there, it can use all your knowledge. When I was in Allstate, like half of what made my job easier was the the templates that we had that were passed on from all the lawyers that were there. So I didn't have to go look for a MSJ response. I didn't have to go look for emotional yeah. limiting. I didn't have to go look for an exhibit list. That's what came together from you know, the firm being around for a long time. But it's the same thing here. Like I didn't come here with a whole bunch of petitions that, that I had already drafted, but Nick had a ton, so that's, yeah, the collaboration is part of what we do in the office. It's gonna disrupt all the industries. Law school's an example. Hey, artificial super intelligence, which we get to in three years, create the best system in which to teach. You think that's, become that's how far it is, three years away? I think ASI is three years away. Artificial super intelligence is three years away. 
And when that hits, who knows what's going to happen. We are, we are in an arms race right now. I mean, we are in a race right now for billions and trillions of dollars. Microsoft, Google, Amazon, they're all racing. Who's gonna be the winner? Like Google became to... the winner of the search engine? Yeah. Who's gonna be the winner of AI? Do you have an opinion on who you think is gonna win? Uh, AI's, uh, ChatGPT is ahead of the game right now. <laughs> and the fact that they've set up their own the ability to create a chat GPT within businesses and businesses now are spending millions of dollars to create their own chat GPT mm -hmm. that gives them a huge advantage Gemini is behind are you are you of the opinion that firms should create their own absolutely I think we should in a heartbeat I think you're doing your clients a disservice if you're not because you want the best product to go in front of that judge mm -hmm. and if you're not doing not using all the materials you have and all the work that you've done for the last 20 years mm -hmm. And being able to generate that in two seconds, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you wasting that? I look at this as so amazing. I wish I had this when I was filing my petition for my immigration stuff. I mean, it took me a year. It would have taken me 20 minutes to file my whole petition, the entire thing. And the great thing about this that I see, especially for the lawyers, is you already know this stuff as a lawyer. This is going to give you information you're gonna be like ah that ain't right oh that's good i didn't think yeah. about that oh that's, that's awesome i think you know we're in a good spot because we we have had the intelligence and to, now we have these tools to enhance our intelligence right whereas right. before i mean whereas in in the future i think we're gonna have a lot of people acting like intelligent people yeah. because <laughs> we're in the front end of the bell curve mm -hmm. we've always been on the front end of the bell curve of technology in other words you know, here's the people that don't use it. You come all the way up. These are the average person who uses it. And then the front end are the, are the first users. We've never been at the very front, but we've always been on the downhill in terms of technology, our firm has, right? Which is why we're going to file line, which is why we're, you know, moving off what we're moving. But with this stuff, I think it, it's going to help us to be even further on that, on that bell curve. And I think we need to be ahead, and we'll be ahead of our competition if we do this stuff. So we, we've got to do it. So one of my projects is going to try and create an internal chat GPT for the firm. Y'all got it? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. All right.